This is Gary Eisenberg, one of the many alumni in Johnny Martinez Band. I'm presenting now the second half of his autobiography, and I want to begin it with uh, his conclusion, actually, which is so Johnny. I know I'm the type of guy that when I die, they're going to say, Johnny Martinez, you were great. We love you. As I was in school, I heard about this great piano player, Mr. Chamaco Dominguez, whose family was the originators of uh, Frenesi and Perfidia, and he was one of the boys, um, was touring through the Middle West, and, and uh, he, his bass player was going to leave him, and his bass player said, Johnny, why don't you join this guy? This guy's great. So I did. I left the, the resort chain. I finished. He was working in Chicago and, and uh, touring through the jazz clubs because he used to play jazz and Latin, and that was my bag. I did love that stuff. So I was playing jazz bass and, and salsa, Latin, Latin bass, and uh, touring with Armando Chamaco Dominguez. Well, he was such a great, great piano player that uh, in our audience, uh, many times we had Art Tatum, George Shearing, uh, Errol Garner. Uh, they all came to hear this guy, Chamaco. They'd sit out there and say, yeah, Chamaco, yeah, baby, yeah, Chamaco. You know, so I felt so good that I was playing for the big ones. You know, this ego SP had come in and listen to these people. And uh, I, I felt good. I'd go over and meet them. And they'd say, you bass player. Yeah, I play nice bass, man. You play nice. So I felt good about it. You know, so traveled with Chamaco for a while. And um, uh, I did some a job with uh, uh, out of school. They sent me to do a show with uh, Carmen Cavallero at the Chicago Theater. <laughs> well, that was my dream when I was a kid, to be up there, you know. So I went to, and played a couple of nights with, uh, a couple of days with uh, Carmen Cavallero, another great piano player. So here's two great piano players, and he loved the way I played. He said, you play so nice. He says, I'd like to take you to New York. So I says, well, I'd like to go, but, you know, I have ties here and all that. So um, he said, well, come on up there for a couple of weeks. So I said, okay. So I went up to New York, and I played with Carmen Cavallero, and... Uh, I got to hear Tito Puente and Tito Rodriguez and Machito, Dizzy Gillespie, all those hot Latin bands, because Dizzy used to play a lot of Latin. And, uh, oh, I got so fascinated. I really learned to love Latin because, uh, like I said, I was jazz, but this Latin was modern structured Latin. You know, it was really good. I really loved it. So I had to leave. So I left and I came back to Chicago. And, and uh, at this time, Chamaco had uh, I think four weeks off that's when, why I could go up to New York with with Carmen so on my last two weeks of the vacation a guy by the name of Chewy Reyes from the Macombo in Hollywood was passing through town and his bass player got sick and uh, some other bass player from Chicago took his place well this guy was leaving for Miami in a week right after that engagement and and this guy couldn't go with him so he says Johnny why don't you go with Chewy Chewy's a great piano player I says, yeah, I love that. He says, he's a good Latin player and jazz. And Okay. So Chewy asked for an audition, and I went to the club. I played a set with him. He says, you're in. You're going to Miami with me. This was in the middle of January when the snow was up to my buttonhole, you know, <laughs> my ombligo. And, <laughs> and colder than hell. And this guy's invited me to go work in Miami. Is he kidding? I says, I'd love to. So off I went to Miami with Chewy. I became very well, very, very, very well um, acquainted with Miami. I loved it. And um, uh, one day, Chewy comes to the, he's a fast money man. He had money going all the time, gambling. I mean, he spent his money like it was nothing. And um, in fact, I got a car for my loan. He had bought a brand new uh, Buick Riviera with air conditioning. Now, that was unheard of in those days. Uh, air conditioning in a car? Wow. Well, he had bought one. Uh, uh, Riviera, not a Riviera, yeah, no, it was a Buick Roadmaster, that was the big one, and <laughs> he used to let me drive it around, because he used to like to feel like a king, sitting in the back seat with his wife, so he said, Johnny, take us here, take us, yeah, you know, nah, I'd like to drive the car, so I, I still like to drive, I love to drive, so I drove him around, and he'd take me to the racetrack, and if I lost money, he'd give me back my money, or he'd come up to me and say, are you losing, I said, yeah, yeah, he says, here's an extra hundred, go ahead, have fun. So um, he, uh, he said, at the end of the job, he said, pick up the music, Johnny. I'd pick up the music. He'd give me 25 bucks, 20 bucks, 
50 bucks, whatever. Whatever he wanted, he just give it to me. He said, there, thanks for picking up the music. I mean, this guy was, uh, uh, boy, he knew how to spend money. Well, he asked me one day if I could loan him $1,000. Well, I had it because I was working in Miami making good money. I was doing 300 a week uh, at the Millionaire's Club, Felix Young's like, Long Restaurant. So I says, okay. So I says, but what do you got for collateral? He says, I'll sign over my car for you, and if I don't pay you within a month, it's yours. I says, are you kidding? At this time, that car costs like $18,000. So he says, no, I'll give, I'll give you back your 1000 Don't worry. I said, okay. So he signed over the car to me, and uh, three weeks later, he says, Johnny, you like that car, don't you? I says, yeah, I like this car. He says, it's yours. I don't have to pay you the 1000 do I? I says, mm, not if you give me the car. He says, well, it's yours. So I ended up with this beautiful car <laughs> for $1,000, and he went out and bought another one, newer. So, I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. Anyway, I learned a lot from him. One day he came up to me and says, Johnny, uh, I have an offer to go to the La Rue's in Miami, Miami Beach. He says, um, but this guy here at this Millionaire's Club, which was on the beach too, it was on 94th and Harding, 94th, yeah. And um, he said, but this guy here, this Millionaire's Club, they, they won't let me go. I said, why? Well, we're just another band. They had three bands at the club. They had... Uh, us, Chewy Reyes, and they had uh, a Mickey band from New York playing show tunes and uh, uh, and 21 violins, strolling violins. So we used to take one-hour shots, and we'd do two sets, one at 9 and one at 11, and we'd be off by midnight. And then by then, all the swinging clubs were starting to open because Miami was hot at that time. Down this, Just down Collins Avenue, there was maybe... 25 to 35 hotels with bands from New York City, you know, like Joe Cuba, La Playa Sextet, Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, Sacasas from Cuba, all these great bands down, up and down Collins Avenue. So I used to, at midnight, I'm out roaming around, you know, having a ball in Miami. Well, he says, this guy offered me the job at La Rue's and I want to go, but uh, the club owner won't let me go. So uh, he says, unless you are the leader. I says, why me? He says, he says he likes the bass player. He's got a great personality, and if, if I leave him in charge of the band, half of the band there, and you can take the other half, and leave me in charge, and leave me his music, because I used to write the music for him too, so I was very acquainted with the music. So he says, if you leave that kid here, you can go. So he says, you mind, Johnny? Then after this, we'll join forces again somewhere. I said, okay, fine. So I took over the band. That was how I got my first band. It was given to me like that. I negotiated with Felix, the owner of the club, and he says, well, I'm not going to pay you what I pay uh, Chewy Reyes. I pay him um, $2,800 a week. He says, I can't pay you that. You're not a name like him, but um, I, I'll give you $2,100 a week. Are you kidding? There I go. You know, by that, with that, I had to pay some of the guys in the band. Um, so anyway, my payroll was about uh, $1,400, I think it was, and the rest was mine. So I had a $700 job a week, which was nice, you know. I said, wow. So I became a band leader. Stayed at the Felix Young's for three years <laughs> at this Millionaire's Club when he finally says, Johnny, I'm going to sell the place, but I want to keep you busy. So I've already made arrangements for you to work at the Sepango Club in Dallas, Texas, the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans. Uh, uh, you're opening up at the Riviera uh, in Las Vegas, a brand new hotel they're doing. Uh, would you mind? I said, no, I'd love to. So, um, Felix Young again. Then he gave me a letter. If you ever go to Hollywood, go to the Macambo, go to Ciro's, go to the, the Crescendo, show them these credentials, and you'll get to work because I am Felix Young. And he was a, the man. You know, any, Anything he said, that's what went. He was dealing with millions all the time. So I just hit lucky. You know, here I am a band leader, and already I'm playing millionaires' places, and I'm doing fantastically well. I'm going to Texas. I played for millionaires. And, and well, I never n did come into my flying experience, but uh, who needs it? We're, fl we're flying with music right now. And I went to, s to the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans, had a beautiful time, went to the Sepango Club in, in Dallas, Texas, a millionaires' club. I had a wonderful time there, eight months. From there, I went to 
uh, the Riviera in uh, in Las Vegas. At the time, uh, I said, well, on my day off, I'm going to take a ride down to Los Angeles. Hey, Los Angeles. Remember people used to tell me I'd end up in Hollywood someday? And I had a lot of Pachuco friends from the war here. So I said, hey, I'll go see my boys, my friends, you know, see what they're doing. Here I am, a successful band leader. going to go back there and tell all these GIs how successful I am, you know, how I'm doing great. So on my day off, I came to L.A. That through there, uh, I had met guys like Lalo Guerrero, Eddie Cano, uh, Tony Martinez, Tito Rivera. Uh, they were bands from L.A. I had met those guys, and I helped them out with some things around Chicago. And um, when I came to L.A., I asked, where are these guys working? So somebody told me that they were at the Mambo City in uh, Hollywood. Well, I came to, to L.A., and I said, i got to get a pack of cigarettes. So I went in, and I looked in this, uh, this store, and there there was all kind of Mexican food, tortillas, chicharrones. I said, wow, I wasn't used to that. So I said, hmm, I'd like to stay in California. This is great, the food, you know. So I went, anyway, I went to Mambo City, and they had three bands. They had um, Chico Sesma, uh, Tito Rivera, and, uh, and uh, Eddie Cano. So I went there, and some guy calls out my name. I said, who's that? I don't know anybody here. It happened to be the owner of the club. He says, Johnny Martinez, I saw you in, in Miami. I used to go to the Sapango Club. I said, oh. You did? He says, yeah, you, beautiful music. What are you doing here? I said, well, I'm at the Riviera. I'm here just to, he says, you know the guys in the band? I said, yeah, I know Eddie. And I know the, so, oh, well, we called them over and all. Oh, they were glad to see me. At the end of the job, they took me to eat at Nayar Eats in the restaurant and on Sunset. We had a beautiful time. And um, uh, amazingly, the owner offered me the job at Mambo City after, after uh, the Riviera. So I said, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, so I signed a contract to him to come here, and I never did use the letter that Felix Young gave me to, to go into the Macambo and Sears. I never used it. I didn't need it because after I came to L.A., I became very popular, and people loved me. Uh, however, the union wouldn't allow me to work for 90 days on a steady gig as a bass player. So I went with them, and, and who was in the band but the Xavier Kubgat musicians who were on vacation. So I got to know them, and after the tour, a couple of days later, a guy calls me and says, Hey, would you like to uh, join the coup got band? I says, Wow, what is this? You know, I'm waiting out my 90 days. I says, I can't. I got to wait 90 days. He says, Don't worry. Coup got will fix it all up for you. Uh, we're opening at the Statler Hotel right down 8th, uh, was it, 7th and Hill? Oh, no. Anyway, downtown. Um, I said, sure. So Kugi called me, and he fixed it all up with the union for me to open with him. And I, he says, you're the fellow from Miami. I remember coming to see you. You're a fantastic musician. And thank you, Mr. Kugat. Anyway, there I was, opening day. I'm sitting up on top, looking down at the audience and saying, here I am with Kugat. <laughs> and I remember my days when I was sitting in the front row in school and say, wow, I made it. Here I am. Hollywood, Kugat, the whole thing. Well, I toured with Kugat for a couple of years came out of that and uh, everybody in LA took a liking to me and uh, I started working all the clubs uh, with different groups and finally somebody says Johnny why don't you organize your band again I said well okay fine I'll do that so I organized a band and I went to work at a place called the Bayonne in the East LA well from there on out people like Chico Sesma, Eddie Cano, Tony Martinez, Manny Lopez, all the Good local bands here liked me. They took me under their wing, and uh, I have never, never been sorry for staying here in good old you, in good old Los Angeles, because I love the people here. They've treated me so well. Once I organized my band here in L.A., I have never been out of work. I've been working six and seven nights a week, every week. I haven't had a vacation in 35 years, and I love it. I don't need a vacation. I, love I know that there's people out there who talk about me and say things that uh, I don't deserve, but um, I love them. And I know I'm the type of guy that when I die, they're going to say, Johnny Martinez, you were great. We love you.